Hey, this is Pastor Curry, pastor of the Easy and Fair Baptist Church, Wilmington's most exciting church, the church that love ya and anything you can do about it. Today with Coffee with Curry, I'm honored and I'm privileged to have our, our state representative, as, as, as some will say, but I'll say my state representative, even though I'm not from the Wilmington area, and that's Sherry Dorsey Walker. What a great joy it's gonna to be to have her on the show today, and I'm looking forward to talking to her about some of the legislation that she's already gotten through the House, but we also wanna look and see how it's gonna happen in the Senate, and if they play right, everything will be good. We also want to talk about her quest to become the lieutenant governor. So there's so much going on and she got a big event going on on May the 2nd. I'm looking forward to that. So it's just so much we're going to talk about. Why don't you call somebody real quickly? Tell them Coffee with Curry is on and let's get after it. Good morning, Delaware and surrounding areas. You are now tuned in to this week's Coffee with Curry. Join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. with new guests every week. So grab your cup of coffee and join us on Coffee with Curry. And we're back. Well, as I share with you all, I am so delighted, State Representative, to be with us today. I'm just, uh, I, I'm shocked first that you had time in your very busy schedule because I hear you beating up walls, you're beating down doors, you're beating down everybody, trying to make sure they understand that this election is very critical for the state of Delaware. So first, let me say welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Curry, for having me. And it is truly a privilege. Now, I notice you're trying to cover it up, but your hand is all busted up. What's that all about? Help me before I get started even with mom today. You know, it's so funny. I tell people that this is an old football injury. I've been quarterbacking out in these streets. That's what's happening. Well, you must be quarterbacking strong because because <laughs> the, the, the results I'm hearing from the people that you are everywhere. Yeah. And I'm very grateful. So if, the, if it causes you to have a, a busted up hand, yeah. I'll take that. Take but how are you doing? Are you feeling fine? Is everything going well for you? It is well. This will come off on Thursday. Oh, the come Lord. Yes. Oh, the come yes, off on Thursday. Yes, yes, oh, okay. So, Thursday. but now, now, does that mean there'll be no more um, quarterbacking on the street, or I'm does that continue quarterbacking? Okay, you're yes. just gonna be more careful uh, how you uh, how you handle. It. I think I'm going to just continue the way I've been doing it. Oh, okay. It's not like they have me so, all repaired. So. Uh, well, for repaired, but if you don't change yeah. some stuff, as Mom Maple said, you uh, continue to do what you've always uh, done. You're gonna get what you. So, you want another busted up hand? No, I don't want a busted up hand. Uh, I, I want I want to bust up the polls and make sure that we went on September. And, and listen, and that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. I believe that. I, you know, I, and and we often joke, and 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 for those of you who watch us constantly, I I joke about you know my um, state representative, and because I don't know of anybody who have put through as much legislation as you, that you have put through, um, and the amount of time you've been in the in the, in, 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 the, in the house, it's just it's just remarkable. And I don't hear you tooting your own horn, saying that I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest here, Sherry. Here, Sherry. But there 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 come a time when we have to start celebrating people who really who's putting purposeful legislation out there. Um, it, and it has nothing to do with personality, although you have a, a very attractive a personality. personality. Mm -hmm. But it has to do with you really putting putting your work, your mouth, your ethics to the ground and making things happen. So before I even get started, I just wanted to say that to you, and I want to say that publicly, that you have really done a yearman's job for the residents of Delaware. Not, not just because the legislation you put forward, I want to talk about three. Now, there are many, many, many more you could talk about, but, but, but the legislation that you have put forward is not just for Wilmington. Correct. It's for the state of Delaware, and it is making us a better people, making our children better, making those you know, those, those those fathers who, who who ran into some hardships better. So I'm just looking forward to having those conversations. But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about mom. We we certainly are going to continue to miss yes. Aunt Peggy. Yes. As, uh, you know, she's now home in glory. Yes. But but how's mom doing? She's great. She, she is great. wonderful. Is she? And she she said that she's still waiting on her cup, her mug, because she oh, drinks her wow. coffee every day. Oh wow! So she wants her and I promise, <laughs> I yes, promise yes. that I was going to have. It. Well, I'm going to make it happen. And okay. if if you come on the show again and I didn't do it, then you, it's going to be your fault because you need to it, make sure. You remind me. Well, she'll see you on May second. Then. Oh yeah. Oh well, you know what? I want to talk about that too. Yes. I will definitely be there. And if I'm not there, I make sure that my finances is there. But okay. I will make sure that happens. Matter of fact, I'm going to be there. Let, let me let me ask you about how's the family doing? I mean, how's hubby and everybody doing? right now we are well 
Real well? Real well, thank you for asking. Okay, yes, good. it's a family affair when you run for office. Yes, yes. yes. And I'm, with all this running you're doing, that's why I'm trying to get a feel to making sure everything is still strong and going, yes. going forward. Well, June 12th, we'll celebrate 20 years of marriage. Wow. My college sweetheart and I. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, did he go, y'all both went to? So I went to University of Delaware for undergrad and uh, uh, Howard for film school, for grad school. And that's where y'all met at Howard? That we met. So uh, we're college sweetheart. He was supposed to go to University of Delaware. Uh, but the weekend that he was supposed to do his visit at University of Delaware, his, he, at the time, played football okay. and would have received an academic and athletic scholarship. Penn State called and asked for him uh, to come visit. So what, you, what would he? What would anybody who's I seventeen said. years old do in that absolutely, moment? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, yes. That program that Penn State had. But, but that's the way good. God does things. Absolutely. So we're, we're still. We ended up being college sweethearts, and yeah. now celebrating twenty years of marriage excellent. on June twelfth. That's excellent. And like I said, we have a family affair. We have an amazing team working to ensure that we get elected. So shout out to my team. Yeah, and I'm like, grateful. Let's take a moment and go there first because I am I'm always impressed with how you manage, mm -hmm. okay? Not just, because you do so much, you so many places, but there has to be people who really keep you on track because you'll yes. be you, you'll be dead you'll be falling yes. out you yes. just destroyed but you got to have a good team let's talk a little bit about that and that, that wasn't really going to be a part of what i talked about today but i do want to give that we talk about mom we talk about family let's talk a little bit about that team that really keeps you in front doing what you need to do yes they keep me grounded yeah i don't have yes people around me i know okay. a lot of people in my position would rather have someone or individuals who are yes people none of them are yes people okay each and every one of them will tell me you know i didn't like the way you said that i didn't like the way you presented that let's practice so that we can get this a little better mm -hmm. let's make that tighter they'll talk to me on the way to events and I just, I'm so grateful to have such an amazing group of people. And they're godly people too, who they're not ashamed of the gospel either. Okay. And they'll they'll let me have it spiritually <laughs> and, and worldly. So, yeah. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that though, yeah. because yeah. you can't grow if you don't know. Absolutely. So when you have a great team, that's how you can operate the, the way that I do up and down the state. They, they'll drive me, they'll talk to me, they'll help me with talking points, make sure the website is right and tight, if mm. you will. Make sure, uh, Senator Margaret Rose Henry said to me, she said, I've seen everyone's designs and there's something special about yours. And mm. I said, that's because there's an extra level of love that's mm. added. Mm. And that love comes from the connection and the closeness that I have to my team. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. Yes. And, and you know, it's interesting because I called you uh, this weekend yes. and, and while driving back from an appointment, a, a, a preaching engagement I had in Philadelphia and it was during the weekend and immediately you were connecting with people in your team and yes. they were connecting to the call to make yes. sure that, you know, I'm just, yes. I was I was so in awe because most people once Friday hit, they're in the bed, they're done. No more no hiding sir. cell phone. No that's sir. not happening with your team. But that's not how I that's not how I govern. Okay. Ever since I was on city council, mm -hmm. I've always availed myself to the people. Now mindful that I need to spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. And and I do that. Mm -hmm. But I'm a I'm a servant. Yeah. And as such, I do answer my phone. And if yes. I can't answer my phone, I'll call you back. Yes. yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes you call back and say your favorite state representative. Always. <laughs> to make sure that <laughs> we won't get it twisted. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it, it's 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 really a joy um that 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 you are still have the energy that you have mm -hmm. because campaigning will wear you out. It wears you out if you don't really like being around people. Oh. It, Tell me. Yes, I love being around God's mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And even those who, I, I, I love being around people, period. Okay. I just love hearing people's concerns and being in a position to be able to address them. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. Like my pastor always says, I'm not perfect, but we serve a perfect savior. Yes. But what I do love is being in a position where I can call someone, where I can reach out and say, let's see if we can get this issue resolved. Mm -hmm. And then having people who have a willingness to make sure that these issues get resolved, whether it's housing, voting rights, economic development opportunities, or economic opportunities for black and brown people, mm -hmm. and, and ensuring that veterans, women, people of color have opportunities too. Mm -hmm. I want to ensure that this is, like, I know that society can't be utopian, I get okay. that, mm -hmm. but the best that I can do to bring about the necessary changes that I desire to see, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. I desire to be the change that I want to see in our society. Mm -hmm. 
Well, well, you're working hard at it, and 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 I, it was it was we, we were having a conversation, me and a f- few other folks, and we were asked, we were saying, uh, do, do, how do you think uh, Sherry is going to do? And they said she's going to do well because they nobody going to outwork her. That's true. And, and when they said that, I said, what do you mean? They said, listen, if it comes down to being in the people's face, giving and being able to you look, at, look at a track record that has already been established, no one will be able to beat her. Now, sometimes you get people who just they don't they don't pay attention to track records and things of that nature. But I'm very everybody can see beyond just Wilmington that you really work hard and and we're grateful for that. Thank you, thank you. I, I I'll say this and I say it all the time. No one is ever going to outwork me. Mm-hmm. I ran track. And you really have to know what you're doing to beat somebody who I'm accustomed to getting across that finish line. Okay. But, and I'm accustomed to when I need to pass the but well, usually the baton was passed to me because I was the anchor. So, okay. I'm, I'm so you you close person. it up. I close it out. You close it out. Okay. <laughs> in, the name, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, right, right. Yes. And, and even even if, even if the person who's coming to give give you the baton, you you, you if they're behind, your goal is to get back in front. Absolutely, without Absolutely. question. Absolutely, without question. Okay, all right. Yes. Well, before we go to a commercial break, I want to start off by talking. There's three bills that I'm interested in. Okay. Um, um, you've done so many, but some really, they kind of touch me personally because I deal with a plethora of people. Um, first was the lunch bill. You can give all the technicalities of it, but but if, to notice that children, all children should should eat, all children should, should nobody should be shamed and things of that nature. Um, first, I want to know how to share a little bit about the bill and, 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 and where are we with it? OK, House Bill 263 is the bill that says that if a child, which really is an oxymoron because children don't have outstanding bills, if the parent of the child has an outstanding meal bill, then the child right now, the way that the law is set up is that our children cannot participate in extracurricular activities. Mm-hmm. And so what this bill does is it stops that practice. And I received calls from some superintendents who were like, I am like I'm in awe. I did not even realize that this was a practice that was happening in my district. Yes, I'm signing on to this. Yes, this is egregious. It should not be happening. Only three school districts in our state, Christina, Capital, and Colonial, do not charge our children for meals. And Red Clay will, in fact, give our child one free meal. And then if the child wants an extra meal, well, then they have to pay for that. But Red those four school districts don't prohibit our children from participating in extracurricular activities. The rest do. Mm-hmm. And now this particular bill, which did pass the House unanimously, is now over in the Senate. Mm-hmm. Now go back a little bit. So so this, basically the, the school districts that serve Wilmington, they don't really have that issue, which is, speaks to your, you being more state than you're just looking at Wilmington. Correct. You saw an issue, yes. you heard an issue or whatever way it came to you and you decided I need to take this on because this is shaming almost. Well, it is. It's poverty shaming and it yeah. was brought to my attention by people up and down the state. Mm-hmm. And once this was brought to my attention, I knew I needed to do something about it mm-hmm. and work with my colleagues to bring about the necessary changes to stop our children from being poverty shamed. I was at a school and saw where our child had on a tray the same thing that everyone else had and then when they got to the when they arrived at the cash register the individual who was working there was very compassionate but said I'm so sorry I can't let you have this Mm -hmm. and then ended up taking that tray and then giving one of our children and when I say our children I'm talking that does not please it doesn't deal with race color creed we're talking about our children all children are our children that's right the tray was taken away from our child and our child was giving a peanut butter and jelly sandwich a milk carton and an apple and what did our baby do took that right over to the trash can and so now our child is still hungry mm. so uh, you can't a ch- hungry child can't learn absolutely so why don't we stop the practice mm. and then representative ray moore added an amendment to the bill and i'm so grateful for that amendment because that amendment is now inclusive of graduation Mm-hmm. So that our children can still graduate. So, so a child couldn't graduate if they weren't they, they were not able to walk. Wow. So if my child, if I didn't pay my child's bill thirty thirteen dollars, twelve dollars, whatever it was, 
My child would not be able to walk because the bill wasn't paid? Contention upon the school district, yes. Right. And with this particular policy in place, and House Bill 263 will abolish that policy and that practice. I think some people don't pay attention to that certain parts of the state have people who are well to do, but there's a lot of parts beyond just Wilmington yes. where there are people who are living in poverty. Correct. And to hear this is very disheartening. And when I heard it first on the source, mm -hmm. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. But now as we are confirming it, there is a, uh, there currently there's a law in the book where people get, a, get, get, get to discriminate against the poor. The poor. Unbelievable. And the word tells us the poor will always be among us. Yeah. So why are we not protecting the poor? Yeah. Well, that's why so in many cases, and I don't want to start the political side of me, but in many cases, I think that that's why um, we live in a Democrat state, but I, it has so many Republican views. Mm -hmm. And to hear what you're saying now is, is to say, OK, you, you're bringing it back to focus because every child, you know, first of all, every parent cannot afford um, people will say, well, I've I've seen pe parents buy their children big this, big that. Well, should the child suffer because th the parents' values may be where it's not need to be? So this bill right here is going to, and then right now it is out of the the uh, house. Yes, it passed unanimously. Unanimously? Republic, yes, with bipartisan support, Republicans and, and this Democrats are for it. This is a, um, what do we call that? This is a, a election year. Yes. Um... Do you think it will? Well, I don't want to say, I don't even want to ask you that question. I'm just going to say for all of you who know about Bill 263, 263 you need to send um, an email or whatever to your state senator and basically tell them not to play with the politics, but to seriously get that across the line. Because that is, is for, first of all, for it to come through the House and get a unanimous vote. That alone, I'm excited about because people recognize the need. Yes. But we're in this election cycle and sometimes people like to play games and the wealthy tend not to care. It's not all the wealthy, but some wealthy tend not to care for the for the poor to the level that they need to. So I think that was one of the bills that I am very, very committed to watching, hopeful and whatever we need to do to help. I'm asking now all of our senators, you know, and we're going to call them out. If, if something happens with this bill, it's three of them I'm watching carefully. And you got a lot of them, but the three I'm watching very carefully. And if something happened with this bill, I don't care who they are, friends or non-friends, I'm going to call them out because at the end of the day, we need to take care of the poor, especially children. Yes. That, that's the extra layer. When we come back, we got another bill I want to talk about. And, and I want to see exactly um, um, where we are with it. Okay. We'll be right back. Greetings, I'm Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker of the 3rd District, and I am running for Lieutenant Governor for the state of Delaware. I have previously served on the Wilmington City Council. I served on the Board of Parole, and I am in my sixth year, my third term as a state representative. And I am seeking your vote on September 10th, 2024 to be your next Lieutenant Governor. I believe I am uniquely qualified for this position. Please consider voting for me on September 10th, 2024. You can also become involved with the campaign by going to my website, www.sherry, spelled S-H-E-R-R-Y, Dorsey, D-O-R-S-E-Y, Walker, W-A-L-K-E-R, that's SherryDorseyWalker.com, and you're welcome to make a contribution. Sign up to volunteer, host a party, join us for parades, but please consider voting for me on September 10th, 2024 to be your next Lieutenant Governor. May God bless you and continue to be a shining light in your life. And we're back. Great conversation on the front end of our show today. And we had an opportunity to get some catch up, talk a little bit about mom, talk a little bit about family and some of the amazing team uh, that State Representative Walker has around her who's trying to make sure they propel her to the next seat. We know the Lord is going to do it, mm -hmm. but you, it's good to have people around you to do what needs to be done. We got a chance to really talk about our first bill, which is 263. Yes. Now, I want to jump 
to the other bill, which is 273, I believe it is. Yes. That is, okay. I said about those threes. I guess yeah. you like the threes. Well, well, I represent the third district. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, okay. And I want to talk a little bit about that because in our community, speech therapy is very important. Yes, it is. Okay. It's very important because some children are, well, sometimes we are born with defects, but but there are other times when they need some assistance, some guidance or whatever. So help, before we get started by talking about it, let's just share with the people what the bill is about and what is included in that. Okay. House Bill 273 deals with speech therapy. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately what we discovered is, and this is going up and down the state, mm -hmm. is our children who were born during the pandemic were able to socialize with their peers. Mm -hmm. And our babies born after the pandemic weren't able to do so. And as a result of not being able to socialize with children their own age, mm -hmm. their speech patterns were developed differently. And so what this bill does is it says that insurance companies must cover the speech therapy. Private insurance companies are not covering the speech therapy. And so middle class families in particular are finding themselves having to pay 40 to $50 per session. Okay. Most children need three, two to three sessions a week. That's easy math. Yeah. So now you have middle class families trying to dis determine if I'm going to, what is our meal bill going to look like? Or are we going to take care of our child on the front end? And any parent faced with this particular challenge, parents will always do, most parents will always do what they know is right and just for their children. That's right. And so in this case, we're now forcing middle class families and lower class families, oh, excuse me, Medicaid does cover it. So let me make sure I'm, I'm clear on that. Medicaid does cover speech therapy. But for the middle class families, and those who have the private insurance, the insurance companies were not covering. So what this bill does is it says to the insurance companies, you now must cover speech therapy for our children. That's for the state of Delaware. Yes. So, so if I live in Pennsylvania, it's not applicable. It's just for the state of Delaware. For the state of Delaware. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, if you would like to do it in Pennsylvania, I'd suggest you reach out to the Speaker of the House, Joanna McClinton, <laughs> <laughs> who represents West Philadelphia. You yeah. Know, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> when, when Sherelle was here, and we'll talk about her in a minute, yes. but when Sherelle was here, she, I think that's who, who sent her a text yes. message saying, yes. my girl is going to be yes. at your yes. event. Yes. And, and that was the connection. So all of you who did not get a chance to come when the mayor from the city of the new mayor, first woman, black woman, yes. well, first woman, period, in the history of the city of Philadelphia was here. Uh, our state representative Walker was with us and she, in the middle of her speech, she talked about you're the sister that, that she told me to connect with yes. so that you got power everywhere. Well, that, that's, God. That's, God. that's God. That's God. That's God. And it's probably was God told you wear that purple too today. He, he you know, did. That royal color. Well, it's royal. Uh -huh. It's royal. <laughs> it's usually be pink and green, but it, you know, I did the royalty for you too. I appreciate it so very much because <laughs> it makes me feel so good to know that you are connected. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's let's continue to talk a little bit about 273 and, and sometimes we, we, we get off because we're friends Absolutely. and there's a difference in just doing an interview where yeah. you just try to get the information but sure. I'm trying to make sure that I stay connected as well now so so again that's another bill that's going to help the middle and the lower class for the state mm -hmm. as opposed to um just doing something for the city. Of you know, it also helps the upper class too. Okay. Help because me. when we think about this, we're talking about 40 to $50 per session. Mm -hmm. We're saying three sessions, $150 per week, multiply that by four weeks mm -hmm. and then multiply that by 12 months. Mm -hmm. That can really have an effect on your bottom line. Mm -hmm. And you can be a multimillionaire, mm -hmm. but if your child needs to go to speech therapy, your child may need to go four or five times a week. Mm -hmm. So, this is a bill that will affect pretty much anyone who has a, their child in speech therapy. And then we also added, I worked with the Speaker of the House and Representative Kim Williams on this bill too. And they wanted to add our children from basically zero to 18. And so I was just trying to capture our children during the pandemic, our pandemic babies. And they asked, well, could we capture all of the children? And the answer to the question was yes. Absolutely. I added all of it to the bill. Yeah. yeah. So so you did have, now how, is that out of the House yet? That bill has been voted out of the House and oh. it is now in the Senate. Wow. So, so you got two bills yeah. sitting and waiting for the Senate to do what it needs to do. Okay. All right. I like the smile. Okay. Um, now, if I am... Um, understanding the climate, um, when were they, w w the, the Speaker of the House, not the Speaker of the House, the, the person in charge of the Senate. Who, That's the President Pro Tem. Okay. That person gets to choose what goes on the floor. 
It's the leadership team, yes. yes right, so will Tem. that bill go on the floor this year or you don't know that? You would have to call the president pro tem and ask him directly. Okay. Yeah. All right, you make sure you give me that phone number because I want to make sure that I, or, or, or someone needs to connect me to that person because at the end of the day, um, it's, it's election year. And I pay close attention to how people know certain things we don't need to touch right now. We need to hold back because if I'm a vote against it, um, I may not get elected and things of that nature. But these things are well. the last bill you say will help everybody. But I know that first bill was really to stop the shaming of, of, of poor children. And I think that's very important. One last bill I wanted to talk about, and that's that child support uh, bill to see. I talked about that before. As a matter of fact, while talking about that on the source, um, I think it was Colby who said, you know, um, State Representative Walker has a bill coming out about that. And I was like, whoa, because I mentor and I help a lot of uh, parent or males, more or less. But I'm sure the bill, you, you explained the bill to us in its entirety. And a lot of times they're trying to move forward, but because of the past, it just it creates all kinds of problems for them. So help me to understand the bill and, and we'll talk about where it is when you get past that. So House Bill 267, what that bill does is it says that if someone is willfully paying his or her child support, then their license can no longer be revoked, mm -hmm. which is the practice that has been taking place in Delaware, and they cannot be incarcerated. Because think about what that does when you incarcerate a parent, you remove that parent from the child's life. And if we're all about family reunification, then you're not reunifying a family when you remove the non-custodial parent. Then when we take the license away, if we take someone's license, or we revoke someone's license, think about that. How are they supposed to get to work to pay the child right. support? Right, right. So we have to do things that make sense to ensure that our children are protected, uh -huh. our families are protected. And so this is one of the ways that we could do that. It did pass the House, uh -huh. and now it is over in the Senate. Now, now how, how, how strong did it pass the House? Because that, that, that gives me a read. Did it just pass, or did it pass overwhelmingly? I know it wasn't, I know it wasn't uh, without there being any opposition, because I, I know that that could not happen in that way, but how did it, how, how did, did it go through? Well, all the Democrats voted for it. Okay. And there are 26 Democrats in the House. Okay. Yes. All the Democrats voted for it. Yes. <laughs> if a person have back child support, currently they can lose their license. Yes. Um, if they are not willfully paying their child support. What does willfully paying their child support mean? Very good question. So if someone has a child support order for $1,100 per month, mm -hmm. and that person says, listen, I, I paid 1,000, or even says I paid 900, they can theoretically still have their license revoked. And they can theoretically still end up incarcerated because they're not paying the full amount. Mm -hmm. When you are willfully trying to do something, you should not be punished. If I have to do community service hours, and I'm, the judge says I must do 500 community service hours, and I've completed 499 community service hours before I go to court, and the judge says, well, you still didn't do that one hour, and that, I'm just being I'm extreme with, I'm with it. you. I'm with you. But it's that same kind of dynamic. Mm -hmm. Like If someone is really trying to meet what the court says, the court mandate, is then why are we punishing the non-custodial parent? Yeah. Delaware, we need to do better. Yeah, and I I'm like I, I do feel like there were a couple Republicans who voted for it. I'm trying to remember the vote count, but I know for sure all the Democrats voted for it. Yeah, and, I, and I'm trying to make sure I, 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 I people understand who are watching us that you're not saying everyone should get off scot-free. Not at all. You're not saying that you should not pay child support because that is our obligation. But what you're saying is if they're willfully, I'm using your word, yes. the wording now, if they're trying, they're making an effort, yes. they should not lose their license. And I've just worked with someone who was doing a very good job. He just, his his employment did not permit him to pay the level of, 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 of child support that he was assigned to pay. Yes. And he, but he was paying every month. Yes. And, and, he has no license now. 
And that's why, and I brought it up on the source. That's why I was so angered because I'm like, he can't get ahead. And it wasn't that he was like, okay, I'm gonna do what I want to do. I'm, I'm not gonna, he was trying. It just wasn't as the state say, you didn't, you didn't do that one extra hour. I saw the episode. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so, and I think it's just, it's just really sad. So these are the three that I am really interested in and I'm really begging. I don't know which camera I should be looking at right now, but I'm going to look at this one, my, 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 my head one and say, I'm begging that we talk to our senators. We have to get these bills out of the Senate and they need to be passed. Um, it's not about black, white, red, yellow, green It's about humanity. And humanity is what matters above everything else. Shaming, unacceptable. Speech therapy. We know the communities where it's most uh, pr prevalent at. We need to make sure those things work. And especially and, and when you have people who are trying their best, they're not trying to get over on the system. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to rebound. Our judicial system is supposed to help us introduce us back to society, not find a way to get us back incarcerated. So these three bills are very important to me. And I invited you today because I really wanted to talk about those. That was one of the reasons why I invited you. I have another reason which we're going to talk about. But but I really wanted to talk about those three because they were very important to me. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit more time because there's something very special to you. But I just wanted to make sure I got mine out first. But there are some other bills that you may want to talk about as well. So those are the three main okay. bills. Okay. I mean, there are several others, right. okay. but those are the main ones. And then the House bill, and this is something that you've been watching mm -hmm. for the last year and a half. Okay. And it's House Bill 191. Okay. And that's the bill that allows tenants to escrow their rent. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's actually one of your favorite yeah. bills. Yeah, yeah. And so it passed the House, mm -hmm. and now it's in the Senate. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't mean to be unprofessional, but... Okay, what, okay, I can't even ask you that question because you're not in the center. Go ahead. I'll call some of my friends up. So the prayer is okay. that whatever the holdup is with the bill, that the Lord works it out yeah. so that we have people up and down this state, mm -hmm. and I can't stress it enough, who are literally struggling mm -hmm. because their landlords will not fix the property. Right. This bill says they can take all of their rent mm -hmm. and escrow every dime of it mm -hmm. with the judicial court. Mm -hmm. If I'm paying $1,500 a month mm -hmm. and the landlord doesn't fix the property for 30, 60, 90 days, that's $4,500. Mm. That will come back to me on the 91st day. The landlord does not fix the property. That's enough money to get me back on my feet and I can potentially move someplace else. And buy, you put a down payment on a house to yourself. Even there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can be renting to own, yeah. whatever yeah. the situation right. Right. is. Right. Right. But we need people to kind of get out of their own way mm -hmm. and to see the needs of our constituents. Because what I did is got out of my own way and mm -hmm. saw that there was a need with our constituency. Mm -hmm. And what better way than to ensure that the money goes back to our constituents and that we're protecting them. And so the bill is in the Senate. I don't know that it, I don't think it was voted out of committee. And so the hope is that the senators will take another look at it and that we can get it passed and we can start being a blessing to these constituents, to our constituents throughout the state of Delaware who are struggling and suffering as a result of these bad landlords. Now, don't misunderstand me. Every landlord is not a bad landlord. Absolutely not. We have some really good landlords, right. but those who are not great, mm -hmm. they have, they're have egregious. <laughs> I like that. And so why should we be protecting them? Because by not passing this bill, we're protecting the bad landlords. You know, and this is me talking, and I'm not gonna put this on you, but for those of you who remember the Adam Street situation, exactly. Th if they had district. this, if they had this in place, and all of those individuals would have been able to hold their rent or get put in escrow wherever you're supposed to put it at, the the the, the level of drama, the level of, of of shock, the level of hurt or displacement that occurred would not have occurred. One, he would have fixed stuff quicker because he would have wanted his money. 
But number two, if he had not, they would have been able to move to where they needed to move and they would have been fine. But 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 you're right. There are some landlords who are great. I owned property for properties for years and, and no one in Philadelphia can say that he was a slumlord because I lived in most of them myself. Mm-hmm. And one of them in the matter of fact, my family still have them. But yes, I sold it to them. But the reality of it is now is that those individuals who are slumlords, they create this problem. And the people who are victimized are the poor persons who have to live there, have no other choice, have to pay that rent or they get kicked out. Because most of the rights is in the hands of the tenant, or not the tenant, the landlord, to be able to, to take them to court, get them out if they're not paying their rent. Right. So for this to be even sitting, I mean, what kind of what, what, what kind of people would not bring that to the floor? And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And we, we are going to have to um, really start s- stepping up. That is one of the ones that I've been following. I appreciate that so very much, um, especially when the Adam Street situation occurred. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. While well, we, can make, we something can make something ready to happen big in the uh, city, um, everybody talking about it. there may be some, some surprise guests coming. We ain't going to make no announcements right. because we, we don't want to say something and it doesn't happen. Then they'll be like, oh, this, this. But there's some good stuff. I mean, I, I'm excited about your, 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 is it called share, uh, sharing with Sherry? That is correct. Wow. Yes. So, so we're going to have this sharing with Sherry more. Moment. Yes. Um, this is a hundred dollars per person. We yes. started announcing it on our other shows Thank you. Uh, because we are we are committed to this. Thank and you. and I'm uh, just tell well, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a quick commercial break. And after we get out of this commercial break, we're gonna come back and we're gonna spend the last um, whole segment just talking about this sharing with Sherry uh, at the Congo Legacy Center on May the uh, May the second. Yes. And we're gonna see how that turn out. We'll be right back. Join us for an evening of unity and support. Come out to the Congo Legacy Center on Thursday, May 2nd, from 6 to 8 p.m. and rally behind Sherry Dorsey Walker, candidate for lieutenant governor. This fundraiser, hosted by family and friends of Sherry Dorsey Walker, promises an inspiring evening as we rise to unify. Tickets are $100. Please don't miss this opportunity to show your support and be a part of the movement. See you there. And we're back. Great show thus far. I have my favorite state representative here. Uh, but you know, I, you are my favorite, but I have some favorites who are c- very close. So I want to make sure. sure that, you know, Stephanie Bolden don't feel say, like, yes, uh, what are you saying? What are you saying? <laughs> so wrong. I love you dearly. You know, please. I love you. We'll do anything in the world for you. But the, but, but let, we let the younger people, you know, get some some play right now. But in actuality, I do love so much on what you do mm-hmm. and, and you, you, your commitment about putting your... your your words and your actions, they, they line themselves really good. So we got an event going on May 2nd. It's coming up. We only got a couple more weeks. Yeah. Uh, share Sharing with Sherry. Yes. Tell me a little bit about it. Sharing with Sherry, that was actually birthed from my bishop, Bishop Sylvester Scott Beaver. Okay. He, when he was my pastor. Okay. And whenever we would meet, he would have the schedule and put it on the calendar as Sharing with Sherry. Okay. And so that's how that was birthed. Mm-hmm. And so we just kind of stuck with that, okay. Sharing with Sherry. Excellent. Yes. So we even had a TV show, Sharing with Sherry. And then now this event on May the 2nd will be Sharing with Sherry. Okay. And the ultimate goal is to ensure that we get over the fence. Okay. As you already stated and I stated as well, no one will ever outwork me. Mm-hmm. And it's not being egotistical. It's mm-hmm. confidence in the Christ that I serve. Mm-hmm. Okay. But what that means is I still need assistance to get over the finish line. Yes. And that assistance looks like financial st- stability. Mm-hmm. And let's just be honest, people don't always invest in black women. Mm. And I do. I got two of them. You, you do. You do. You do. <laughs> but go ahead. I'm sorry. But in totality. Yeah. And yeah. even to hear Mayor Sherelle Parker's her testimony yeah. when she spoke at your church mm-hmm. and when she talked about how she didn't have money, mm-hmm. but she had faith mm-hmm. and she worked hard. Yeah. No one's going to outwork her. Yeah. And, and we call her mayor right now. That's right. The very first one. Mm-hmm. And so I am aspiring to become the first black woman lieutenant governor for the state of Delaware. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, but not just a lieutenant governor for black people. Uh I'll be a lieutenant governor for all people. Absolutely. But I'll be a lieutenant governor who our children can look at and say, you know what, if I can see it, I can believe it, then I can achieve it. Mm -hmm. It's May 2nd will put us in a position where people can come out 
fellowship, mm. make contributions, mm. and share with Sherry. We're having Sherry with Sherry at the Congo Legacy Center from six to eight. Okay, from six to eight. Now, so so it's two. It's a hundred dollars per person. Yes, that's the first the first line. Yes, and and then once you're there. They can share some more. They can like share give, some more. They can give some more money after that. Yes and amen. A- amen. Yes and amen. Yes. Well, what I want to do is, my wife wanted to make sure that I didn't forget because okay. I forget like I did with Mom's cup. Okay, <laughs> I forget because I'm so busy trying to yeah. get things done. Well, you're busy trying to get me elected. I, I, I definitely want yes, you to get elected. Yes, yes, let me yes, let me yes. be honest with yes. you. I want Sherry Dorsey Walker to be elected Thank as you. the Lieutenant Governor for the state of Delaware. I want that, but I want to make sure my wife and I will be there. And I want to do it on TV in front of, not that I'm trying to show off, but I need some some others to call. You, you heard the commercial. You will see the, the where you can call, where you can, where you can get tickets, where you can donate. All that is going to be this time in this segment is really about making sure financially we help State Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker to become the Lieutenant Governor for the state of Delaware. So Publicly, I want to give my wife and I two hundred dollars for our two thank tickets. Appreciate That's just that. the two tickets. Thank you. And then we thank ha- you, thank and, you. and 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 as I was speaking with a few people, and I want to sit, talk directly to the camera again. As I was speaking with a few people, that two hundred dollars is for the tickets. It's a different organization than the direct campaign. So I'm still eligible to give the max yes. in my own side. Check with your own people if you want to. I made sure I'm paying attention to everything I do. So the tickets is just saying I'm coming to an event that's sponsored by a group that want to see you get in. But then di- do- donating directly to your campaign will be something totally different. And we are going to make sure that when we show up, we're going to show up with another check. Well, appreciate that. Because at the end of the day, it's one thing to say I want you to win. It's another thing to help you win. And right now. It, it's, this is a friends and family fundraiser. Okay. So friends and family are actually sponsoring this. Right. So I appreciate that. Yeah. I really appreciate you and your wife's commitment. Absolutely. To, to ensure Absolutely. that we get over the finish line. Yeah, now, now, Ashley is now 13. Should I have given you 300? Because I forgot about, <laughs> I keep forgetting. She's been so young so long. Now she's 13 <laughs> doing great things. I forgot that when she's turned 12, you're no longer free. So if I need to add another 100 to that, I'll do what I have to do because I want my family to be there to support our Sherry. You have been a blessing Thank you. to people. Thank you. I'm from the hood, okay? And whenever you find people who are going to support those who are still in the hood, That's right. I'm with them. Thank you. I'm with them 100%. So, so, so we're gonna all come together. I don't know which cameras, I'm, today I'm just so excited. I'm just <laughs> all over the place. But we're gonna all come together on May 2nd, six o'clock. Matter of fact, so you can get a good parking space, you need to arrive around 5.30. So that you can get a good parking space. It's still daytime. You ain't got to worry about it being night for our seniors who are watching. And we need to make sure we pack out the Legacy Center, wherever room they're going to have it in or wherever they're going to have it at. And I want to make sure that everybody, please, please, let's show up and let's support. There may be a surprise. And I'm not, and this is me talking. We're working on a surprise that, that you don't want to miss. So while we're finishing up the details of the surprise, and we don't have to announce it right now, what we want to make sure we're doing is telling you, get your ticket, get your ticket. Stop saying we support you, Sherry. We support you, Sherry. We support you, Sherry. But there is no finances behind it. Well, Pastor, I don't have the money. You can do something. Show up and just bring a check, you know, and say, hey, look, I don't have 100, but here's 50. And I guarantee you, they would accept it the exact same way. Am I right? Absolutely. Because everything matters. But this is going to be a great opportunity. This will be a great opportunity for us to really come together as a as a as a group of individuals. And I'm not politicking for anything because I love these. I am fair. One day I'm going to retire, and I'll be going off the scene. But I'm not looking to be the mayor, the governor, the none of that stuff. I just love people who want to help community. And I think that's most important. So again, it's going to be this. I mean, it's going to be May the second at the Legacy, a Congo Legacy uh, facility. And you need to make sure you're there. Starts at six o'clock, six to eight, and it's gonna be some sharing time. And it may be a surprise guest that you would not want to miss. I wanna keep saying that to you. And, you, and you, those of you who know me know when I say something, normally it happens, but I'm not gonna announce it until we know for sure. And if, if we know for sure, not that I'm doing it, but it's her team 
that's doing a phenomenal job with making it happen. And all I want to do is I want to just let the cat out of the bag, but I can't do that until I have to. But I'm going to wait and let her team be the front. But I think you need to get your tickets. Get your tickets. $100. Let's come and share with Sherry. This is going to be a great event that's going to happen on May the 2nd at the Congo Legacy uh, Facility. And uh, I just wouldn't miss it if I were you. Matter of fact, um, did you call uh, my good friend, Mr. Congo, and ask him to make sure he got tickets? Has he got tickets? <laughs> did, uh, 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 you talking about the president or the son? Both. Okay. And the, and the wife. Okay. Cause, Cause Sherry and I were friends forever too. So yes. so so we got Sherry, that's one. We got, we got, we got um, um, Mr. Congo. What's, what's Mr. Congo's first name? Sammy. Sammy. You got Sammy. You got you got Trippy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and, and those three I can speak for. So so does that's another three people gonna be there? And I think yes. that'll be great. And yes. I can name some other people, all of our friends. Well they're huge supporters. They're, they're huge, huge supporters. supporters. They are. Okay. They are. All right. Huge all right. So they're all part right. of the family process. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll all be together. Well that's gonna be fun. Under one tent and fellowship. That's gonna be fun. Yes. That's gonna be fun. Yes. And I pray that you don't miss it and you have to hear about it, but it's gonna be a great event. Um one more time, let's put it up on the screen one more time so, so that you can see that this event sharing with sherry which will take place on may 2nd from 6 to 7 at the congo legacy center everyone get your tickets you call right now i mean they, they don't go off the clock so just call call there should be a number at the bottom of your screen right now you can call and say i want to be there uh, and 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 show that you are supporting not just physically but financially because that matters in a time like this. Because, you know, I'm a little angered, you know, as 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 I'm not your pastor, you have a great pastor, yeah. but I'm a little angered. My, my righteous indignation has been touched because there are people running just to ensure that you don't get in. But in actuality, they don't understand, as we preached a couple of weeks ago, when they hung Jesus on the cross, they didn't know the scripture that said, if I be lifted, I'll draw all men. So what end up happening sometimes when people have a plot mm -hmm. to not uh, to knock somebody off, they don't understand mm -hmm. that God knows the conversations, God knows the end result. And we're just praying that those individuals who are playing the game, mm -hmm. blocking the blessings of people mm -hmm. who, who really need your your help, your representation, mm -hmm. that God is going to intervene. Because I'm very concerned about some of the... Uh, you got you got a couple of people running. I'm not gonna say any names on purpose because I'm not gonna be malicious. But I, I and, and you have not been. You and have I been very be. and you have been very kind. There's been some debates. I didn't get a chance to go to any of them. How have they gone? They've gone well. They've gone well. Yes, they've oh. gone well. Okay. I've, I enjoy. It. So the athlete in me, okay, is one of those. I, when I'm in a zone uh -huh. and I'm totally focused, uh -huh. which I am. Okay. But during debates, that's kind of like my, okay. that's, that's like game time for me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, maybe that's what happened at that last debate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But I, I love being able to connect to the people, okay. directly to the people during the debates, mm -hmm. looking at people, seeing their reaction, seeing their responses. Mm -hmm and knowing what needs to be done. And what I don't do, I don't frivolously promise that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. I tell the people what I've already done. Good. Mm -hmm. And let the people know that we can do things together because together we rise and we rise to unify. And mm -hmm. that's where I am. Just excited about the, ne the, the elevation mm -hmm. and the desire to help the people it's so interesting. Look, I'm in a store or something. And someone will come up to me. I can be in Kent County, Sussex County. I can be in Newcastle County. And they'll say, you know, a few years ago, you helped me with and mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, oh, my goodness. Or, or do you remember when I called? And at that time, you were on city council. And I live in Sussex. Mm -hmm. But you said, I'm going to help you. And you did. Mm -hmm. Or I called you a few years ago. And I just don't forget. I never forgot your kindness. And honestly, Dr. Curry, I may have actually forgotten that I helped. I may have written it in right. my journal, mm -hmm. but I didn't help that person to be able to come on TV and say, oh, I helped fill in the, this, this one, not even calling names. Mm -hmm. I just 
did it. Right. Because it was the right thing to do. Absolutely. And you mentioned Representative Stephanie T. Bolden, mm -hmm. and you have two two other sorors <laughs> in the State House. And so I'd be remiss if I did not mention Representative Stell Parker Selby, who was also oh, okay. a Delta. Yeah. And then we have a new Delta, Representative Sherea Ray Moore, who just went over. Oh. Yeah. So we want to congratulate her. I don't know her. So, okay. She's the one who has House Bill 2, oh, oh, excuse okay. me, 125. Okay. And that will cover lunches for the entire state okay. of Delaware. Okay. Okay. Now, yes. where is she rooted she out? She represents of? Middletown. Middletown? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, I don't really know. Maybe if you're just going over, I don't know a lot of the Middletown. She just went over. Oh, okay. So I have to make sure She's that fresh off the she, press. Yes, okay. yes. Maybe we need to invite her in Please to, to be a part of this. Um, and, 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 and there's... Um, now, I'm not asking you to really to speak on this, but there's a... Uh, um, the Speaker of the House is up for election, too. And there's... Is that the person who's running against the Speaker of the House? No. Okay. Do you know the lady's name? Who's who, she's a soror too. I just heard about it. I'm trying to get that down pack. But there's a, um, a, a, a young lady who's running against the Speaker of the House. Do, do you know who that is? I do. You do? I okay. Do. I'm, I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna be careful because I don't, I want you to stay untainted. Let me be tainted, and I'll stay away from you, so I won't give you my coal. But um, I'm just trying to figure all, all these things out. I'm just trying to figure all these things out as I'm hearing things. I I want to make sure that I'm. I'm, I'm hearing them appropriately and I'm not saying no other way. But one last thing before we go, because sometimes we get caught up in a lot of our conversations. Um, why, what makes Sherry Dorsey Walker uniquely qualified mm. to be the Lieutenant Governor for the state of Delaware? Dr. Curry, I've served on the Wilmington City Council and I tell people, if you can serve on the Wilmington City Council for one term successfully, you can be President of the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> but I say that jokingly, but council prepares you. Mm -hmm. It prepares you for your next. Mm -hmm. And having served on, on council in the sixth district, mm -hmm. having served on the board of parole, mm -hmm. and then in my sixth term, excuse me, my sixth year, my third term as a state representative, mm -hmm. That is what uniquely qualifies me, my experience, mm -hmm. and my willingness to help others, my desire to make a difference in the lives of others. So this isn't just a position for me. Mm -hmm. This is ministry for me. Excellent. And it's an opportunity to really shift the dynamics. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant governor chairs the board of pardons, mm -hmm. and having served on the board of parole, and learning the intricacies of that system, and knowing people. And when I say knowing people, when people would come before me at the board of parole and I'd see the address, know their, I knew some of the families, mm. maybe knew the individual who was sitting before me. But knowing the community is what I'm referencing. Knowing when someone deserves a second chance mm -hmm. and when someone does need to sit a little longer and wait on the Lord and be of good courage. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, just being in a position. My mother always says this, what is the purpose of having power if you don't use your power to benefit the people? That's right. And so that's where I am, using my power to benefit the people. Mm -hmm. So that's what uniquely qualifies me to be Lieutenant Governor. Excellent. This just won't be a position and it won't be, and I'm not running, some people are running for another seat while running for whatever seat. Mm -hmm. I am 10 toes down, Mm -hmm. in this election. I don't have one foot as a state rep and one foot in lieutenant governor. I'm not going back to be a state representative. I have to run my race with endurance to be the next lieutenant governor. Some people have a cushion. I don't. Okay. I don't have a cushion. Mm -hmm. So I am running mm -hmm. to win. Absolutely. Well, um, will you remember us little people once you've won? So there's no such thing as little people. Oh, okay. Everyone is big in my world. Okay. All right. All right. So when I call you, when you when you win on in November, right. well, really, it's September tenth is our big day. That's our big day. Primary. Right. Yes. So on September the tenth, when you won, and I call, I want us to be able to know. I still know, Lieutenant Governor Elect Sherry Dorsey 
Walker. You won't be calling me on September the 10th because you will be with me on September okay, the 10th. I, you, I, okay. Do you, I, I received that. Yeah, I, I received that too. Yes, I received yes. that too. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And it is always a joy having you with Likewise. me. And and I don't care when I call, you try to make things happen for us. And that's why I want to make sure I reciprocate what you have done for me and for the community that I represent as well as the community at large. You have never been a person who looked at the personality of people. You just want to help. As a matter of fact, there are times when I have was venting and you wanted to know what the issue was. Let's deal with the issue, not the personality of people. So that have always been attractive to me and I'm very grateful for what you are and who you are and where you're going. Thank you so much for taking time with me today. And and again, cash that check right away because <laughs> I may have to spend on something else, but I may have to give another one because I want to make sure Ashley is represented as well. Thank Thanks you. so very much, State Representative. Thanks and for I won't, I won't mess with your wrong hand, all right? And, and so since we did the shout out for Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, yeah. we must do one for Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, yeah go ahead. Member. You can do your shout out as, for them. As a member, as a member. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm well, just saying. But shout to the, out. To the entire Divine Nine. To, Shout out to the ladies, the sophisticated ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, founded in 1908. Mm, I almost gave the Delta D. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but, but shout out to you all. This is all, this is all love. Well, the Divine Nine is the Divine Nine. We love each other, but I love to joke around because I never really left and, and, and separated myself from. So I appreciate that so very much. We'll be right back. And we're back. What a great show today. I'm very grateful and proud uh, to call a friend. Sherry Dorsey Walker has been there, not just for me or for my interest group, but for the community at large. I asked her to come on the show today because when I got word that she was having a sharing with Sherry, um, I wanted to make sure that I didn't just verbally support her, but I wanted to support her financially. And I know sometimes in our community, we tend not to do the finances as much as we would show up for the events, eat all the chicken, and then say, we with you, we with you, we with you. But right now, it's critical. I am a concern about people running just to block people from getting in. There is no reason for certain people to be in that race. And I'm really taking it personal. Why? Because she got in, she, she, she shared her interests, and she shared what she wanted to do. A little bit later, then people start jumping in. Pay attention to the politics. Right now, she needs your support. She needs your financial support. Up and down the state, people are giving her the cheers. They're saying she's gonna make it, you're gonna make it, you're good, you do, you've done this, you've done the other. But it takes money to do that. And listen, she's not like some of the rich representatives who got four jobs or got something lined up over here, something like that. This is a step out in faith. This is a faith step. Cause because like she said, she's not going back to being a state representative. She is in this to win. So I hope today, regardless of all that we talked about, and I have some special interest stuff like those two, three bills that she we talked about. But really I am interested in seeing that she make it to the next level because there are people who I'm connected to, like, like the mayor for the city of Philadelphia. Everyone knows Cheryl Park and I were very tight. I mentored her when she was a student at Lincoln. I was a student. I was the president of student government when she got to Lincoln. And one of the things she asked me while sitting in my pulpit, she said, who's the sister that's running for lieutenant governor? I said, who's Sherry? She said, yes, that's her name. Well, the Speaker of the House called her when she was en route to Ezion and Fair and said, let's help this sister. Let's help. And when, Sher- when Sherelle was sharing that with me, I was like, wow, the level of influence a person in Delaware has, we need that person because the person is not doing it for themselves. Sherry is doing it for the people. So if I were you, I would get a ticket. Again, the phone number is at the bottom of the screen. You've seen the flyers. We're going to continue to announce it. It's for May the 2nd. It's going to be at the Congo Legacy Center, and it's going to be from 6 to 8 p.m. It'll still be daytime. I want you to come out. And listen, whatever you have, let's financially show her support. Because on September, I I get those dates all mixed up, but when she wins, I want to make sure that we're all standing there saying we knew she could because we supported her financially 
spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Those are the tenets that we need to make sure that we're paying attention to. Get your tickets. Meet me there. I'll be there with my whole family unless something happens where I can't. But I'm going to make sure I gave my check today to make sure that I'm not just lipping it, but I'm living what I'm trying to do. Thank you so very much for taking time to be with us. Again, I hope to see you on May 2nd at the Congo Legacy Center as we have, have some sharing time with Sherry. Until the next time, may the Lord God bless you real good. Thank you for watching this episode of Coffee with Curry. Tune in next week, Sunday at 11 a.m.